you must weep, then weep. I shall be here for you. Are you already past it? You are unflappable. I will give you that much. In that case, I will remain silently supportive. You are right that we must keep moving ever onward. Time for a request. I trained with Gerald just the other day. Why? Why did he have to go and die? It's too awful. He didn't deserve it. Unbelievable. I heard Gerald passed away. My deepest condolences. I knew him long before I ever even met you. He was always so much fun to be around. It's such a loss. Hey, how about a favor? Professor, I'm sure you will pull through this because you're so strong, Professor. Best to stay calm during such tumultuous and upsetting times. We don't know the nature of our enemies. If we underestimate them, anything could happen. Yes, I agree. I don't want to lose you too, Professor. Professor, I've sung lyrics lamenting death many times on stage. But when something like this happens in real life, I'm lost. I don't know what to say, but I do know this much. Sir Gerald must have been very proud to have you as his child. Hello. Professor, I, um, I brought some flowers for Gerald. It's the least I can do. Sometimes I feel like all I do is run away. Anyway, I'll go lay them out. Interesting. I slipped quietly into the vault and rummaged about looking for anything we might find useful. There is a group of people who want to kill us, after all. What? This is no time for asking permission. I learned long ago that one can ask permission or forgiveness. It is rarely useful to request the former. Still, it appears the knights have already taken everything useful. There were crest-related objects I thought might be worth studying, so... <sighs> there you go again with that stern look. Of course I'll put them back when I'm done, Assuming they bear no additional use. Professor! Ugh. Professor? Dark expressions don't suit you, Professor. But I'm, well, I'm glad to see you out in the world again. It seems this month will be a quiet one around here. There aren't many knights around to liven things up. Most of the knights are gone, seeking out the enemy. Isn't that a bit much? I agree it's important, but is it a good idea to neglect the safety of the monastery? What do you think, Professor? I agree. We can send some knights after our enemies, but so many? It makes the church seem reckless. Maybe. 
When I heard that Monica was with the enemy, I was surprised by how unsurprised I was. Something was just off about her. It's hard to explain. That said, whenever she had free time, she was always hanging around with Edelgard. I wonder if Edelgard is also... <gasps> oh, I'm sorry. No, I'm just being paranoid. Please ignore me. Professor, do you think we'll still be able to graduate? If dangerous things keep happening around here, who even knows? I'm worried. I hope that all the students and professors will be there to celebrate at the graduation ceremony. There is no one here who has not heard tales of Geralt's valor. We have suffered a most dear loss. I do not know what the enemy's aim was, but I do know this. After what they have done, we cannot suffer them to live. If there is anything I can do to ensure that justice is brought swiftly, you need only give the word. Nice. Professor, it seems like you're holding up okay, but I'm worried about Leone. She really loved Gerald. I hope she can bounce back. I'll say a prayer for Gerald's soul. There's not much else I can do. Teach. I haven't lost a parent yet, so I can't even begin to understand how you must be feeling. But even while you're standing still, the world keeps on moving. I always find that oddly comforting. Lend us your ears. Ferdinand is saying impossible things. I do not see what is impossible about it. All I said was that if you want to go back to Bridget, you probably can. You are the Empire's guest, so to speak. They cannot afford for something bad to happen to you. There would be a diplomatic incident. Someone close to us has turned up dead. So one could argue that you are not safe here anymore. You were already told. I am learning here, from the Academy. What are you thinking, Professor? I am not returning to home until I have grabbed my goal. I will not be listening to the words of Ferdinand. No, look, I did not mean to pressure you. Apologies for the misunderstanding. Professor. I'm so glad you're okay, Professor. I was so worried. Oh, Professor, you must be starving. Mercy and I made some sweets for you. We were thinking that if you were to eat something sweet, it might help you feel better. <laughs> Baking sweets is my specialty. I'm sure they'll do the trick. This is mine! Thank you for returning it to me, but... Professor. Professor, I'm so happy to see you. You're finally returning to your old self. To see the light in your eyes again is a gift. It inspires me to carry on as well. As you know, the Knights are searching furiously for any trace of the enemies who escaped. I'll inform you immediately if I learn anything relevant. gone. He's gone. And we'd only just reunited. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sure this is even harder on you. But I just can't... I can't believe... Hello there. Professor. 
It is a shame what happened to Gerald. I am sorry. There are no words. Leave some flowers on his grave for me. to say at times like these. Just don't push yourself too hard too soon. It's okay to allow yourself to be sad right now. Losing someone dear to you, well, each loss is unique, but it's a feeling I know very well. That said, Professor, I... Oh no, Professor. Thank you for all you have done for us. Nothing to report today. Keep yourself active during tough times, Professor. Even if it seems impossible. That's how I got through it when I lost my parents. If you need help with anything, just come and see me. Eating and training are my specialties. I'm not even close to being strong enough. I mean, Gerald was so much stronger than me, but even he... That's enough. I can't dwell on the past. There's no way to know what my future holds, but I do know one thing. Whatever happens, I have to make my own way in this world. I have to keep pushing so I can grow even stronger. Professor, I'm so sorry about what happened to Gerald. No, of course my sorrow is nothing compared to yours. The Knights are even now searching for our enemy's whereabouts. They are to report back the moment they find something. If you desire revenge, Professor, you can count me in. Excuse me. Not just Tomas, but Monica, too. We can't be sure who to trust anymore, can we? Who are these people, really? What do they want? Oh, Goddess, hear my prayer. Please receive this beloved person. When the cold rain washes the body, when the bird and wolf announce the dawn, receive them into your blue blood. Receive them into a twinkling star. That's a morning scripture from the Church of Saros. Lady Rhea taught it to me. I pray that Gerald is happy in the next world. Need something? See you again soon. First Tomas, and now Monica. I do have a theory. Though I admit it is nothing more than speculation. Both Tomas and Monica have each gone missing at one time or another. It was reported that when Monica returned from her disappearance, she began to act like a completely different person. As if, perhaps, the real Monica had been killed and replaced by an imposter. Thinking of it like that, it is possible that this Solon had been impersonating Tomas for some time. How they managed such a convincing change of appearance, though, I still do not understand. Excuse me. 
Professor, how are you holding up? I know how heavily grief weighs upon one's heart. I lost my mother some time ago. It was... Forgive me my moment of weakness. Even all these years later, I cannot recall that time without feeling the pain as if it were brand new. Just know that I am praying for your mind and your heart to find peace. Marianne, are you not going to pray? I finished. What is it? I just wanted to apologize. It's fine, Ferdinand. You did nothing wrong. Last time we spoke, I did not quite finish saying what I wanted to say. You say I did nothing wrong. So, perhaps you will hear me out this time? Very well. What is it? Rather than mourning the way things are, is it not better to accept reality and move forward from there? Accept and move forward? Precisely. You curse your heritage and reject your present situation. That makes you gloomy, even despairing. As long as you are held back by that way of thinking, nothing is ever going to change. What about you? Do you really believe that you accept whatever comes in life? I do. Come what may, I will never falter. How? Well, each person is born with a purpose. We must fulfill that purpose, no matter our circumstances. It imbues our lives with meaning and direction. That is what I believe, anyway. Everyone has something they are meant to accomplish. That is true for nobles, commoners, even bandits. Uh, I see. So that's what you believe. Do you... Really think it's possible that someone like me has a purpose to fulfill? Yes, of course. Oh. I'll give this some serious thought. Thank you, Ferdinand. Your words have deeply moved me. Is that so? How wonderful. I will pray that you find the answers you seek. <laughs> Is something hiding just behind that book? That ring! I have seen it before. Ah, I know. Gerald showed that ring to you beside a grave. Do you recall? He said he wished for you to have that ring one day. That means it's yours. He also said that you should gift that ring to someone special. something rather uncomfortable to discuss. It's about the weapon that killed Geralt. Will you listen? It was a dagger, but I know enough to know it wasn't an ordinary dagger. It wasn't made of iron or steel because, well, because whatever it was, the wound it left wasn't normal. Who could make a blade like that, do you figure? someone very dear to you. I'm so... You have my sympathy. Manuela and I can take on some of your workload this month. We can't do all the teaching, but at least we can lighten the load for you. I've always seen strength in your eyes. I know you'll recover. You're a very strong person. The glory of progress. Hmm. Right. I wonder. 
wonder who they were. lost your father. Now more than ever, do I understand how very lucky I am that you were able to save me. Professor, I deeply appreciate what you have done. Thank you. If there is anything at all I can do in return, please tell me, okay? I've never been much for condolences. How about a little logic instead? The knights have spread out around Garig Mach in search of Geralt's murderers. Thus, the monastery's fighting strength is, for the moment at least, depleted. Perhaps that was the enemy's real objective. We should be prepared for further confrontation. Hey! First Tomas, and now Monica. I am so sorry. The failing was clearly our own. We didn't notice the enemy's invasion, and now Gerald. I... I apologize. There is nothing I can say to atone for our sins. Professor, please do not let your guard down even among the people the monastery. There is no way to know where another enemy may be hiding. Monica von Ox. There is nothing suspicious in her past that would suggest this change of character. Her transformation must have something to do with her disappearance last year. Sadly, that is the extent of my knowledge. I wonder who kidnapped her, and why. Scared. I feel that I don't understand the world. How could something like that happen to Gerald? He was so strong. You're inspiring, Professor. I'll do my best. Yeah, you just get it, bro. That looks appetizing. Happy! Have we not discussed your revolting table manners enough? Here we go again. Food tastes better when I eat it like this, Coco. Watching you eat is always entertaining. Just look at you go. 
It takes a lot of fuel to keep the insatiable king of grappling at the top of his game. This is my favorite. Delicious. always taste best when it is a company of three or more at the table. Do you not enjoy eating when it's just the two of us? You wound me, Flame. <sighs> the other night, I... I had the honor of sharing a drink with Gerald. He was pretty tactless, honestly. He could be blunt at times, but he always looked like such a proud, happy father whenever he spoke of you. What's that? Hey you, listen up. I've got something to report. But maybe now isn't the time? You seem down. Got something on your mind? I hope you know I'm here for you, if you ever have your own stuff to report. That's what friends are for. Unless it's about money, in which case, I'm busy. What? Captain Gerald's been killed? I can't believe it. From all I'd heard about the man, I thought he was indestructible. He was so strong. What could have possibly... Uh, forgive me. I shouldn't speculate. Okay, this one feels different, doesn't it? Garrick mocks all tense, like the whole place might explode. This is why I've kept to myself all these years. I don't want to be anywhere near whatever's about to happen. Hey pal, hey pal. I see you're up and at him again, yeah? Good on you. No use crying over the past and all. Balthus, have some sensitivity. Who knows what the poor dear is going through right now? That poor deer can hear you, you know. Talking about someone like they're not there. How cold can you get? Uh, a fair point. Please, Professor, forgive my indiscretion. You have my condolences. Remember, the first step to healing is a hefty dose of revenge. Get out there and get to it. Raised you, yeah? It was all you had. You must be feeling a lot right now. When a parent dies, it really leaves a mark. So feel what you need to, no matter how that looks. But know that your inner fire will keep you moving ahead through even the hardest times. like you're having a hard time. Not that I can really understand what you're going through. I know that this is painful, but don't lose hope for the future, okay? 
Someday you'll be able to accept what's happened. And in the meantime, you have plenty of friends here to support you. Me included. I am grateful. I have gratitude. I would like to ask you something. Ah, so that's how it is. Professor. You there, youngster. Won't you listen to this old man's troubles? I was born and raised right here in this town. I spent my whole life here. My daughter lives in the Empire, and she sent me a letter to ask if I was keeping up with my daily worship. Well, hello there, Professor. Is this a friend of yours? Is that so? I was sure you two knew each other. Is there something we can do for you, good sir? Oh, what a lovely young lady. I was just telling this kind soul a story. Really? What's troubling you? Well, I was thinking of going to daily prayer, but my leg's been acting up and I can't walk properly. How terrible. That's no good at all. May I be of assistance? I'd be happy to lend a shoulder and escort you to the chapel. Would you? Oh, I'd be most grateful to you. Thank the goddess for sending this young lady to me today. We'll need your help too, Professor. Here, sir, take my arm. Splendid work, Professor. He really seemed to appreciate our assistance. I don't think I did anything particularly deserving of praise. I'm just happy that I could help. You did a great job cheering him up on your own. Putting a smile on someone's face always seems to brighten up the day. Is something wrong? You're giving me a strange look. Oh, mm, how should I put this? I suppose it's just second nature to me. It's difficult to describe, but I can usually tell when someone is worried about something. Back there, I could tell that both you and the old man were in distress. I spent a good amount of my life living in the church. Maybe that's why I'm so good at identifying these things? Did I not mention that before? I spent nearly ten years of my life in the church of Fargus. Many came to us with their troubles. In my own time of need, I once ran to the church myself, and they helped me. May I share something with you, Professor? It's about a dream of mine. 
I'd like to work in the church one day. I want to be like the priest who helped me. Never mind. It's not a very realistic dream. Please forget I said anything. If I were someone else, perhaps a commoner without a crest or stature, maybe things would be different. It's a bit sad, but this is the way things have to be. After all, only the goddess can decide our fates. <laughs> Honestly, this is a bit of a hassle. However, with you, Marianne, I suspect it will not be so bad. Oh? Um, why's that? Hmm? No reason. Shall we get started? Marianne, you are unusually clumsy. But all turned out well in the end. Funny that. We probably just got lucky. I should go. Am I making progress? Me, 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 me. <laughs> What's the point of singing practice? It's not going to make me stronger. I am grateful. Linhart, there you are. Observant as ever, Ferdinand. What can I help you with? You have been utilizing clever tricks to give me the slip. But not today. Prepare yourself! A noble cannot escape from his duty. Hold these words in your heart. It seems you really mean it this time. I suppose I have no choice but to outmatch you. Finally, a little enthusiasm. You are bravely stepping upon the path of nobility. Let us begin! Come now, Ferdinand. Don't be foolish. I can't possibly train with you. I have places to be. Wait! I will not allow you to get away! I, I can't... I can't run anymore. Just... admit defeat! Can't we... Just a minute. Ferdinand, let me... Let me catch my breath. Well... Maybe just for a moment. I could use a rest myself. <sighs> I am surprised you could run so far. I had assumed that all that lounging around would have dulled your constitution. But I had a difficult time keeping up. The fear of having to exert myself really helped. You're none too slow yourself. It's been a while since I ran like that. It actually feels pretty good. It does, does it not? Well, how about we say that thrilling chase was your training for the day? If you will excuse me, I am going to run even more, so I can catch you next time. After all the running you already did? That's our Ferdinand. You always give everything your all, don't you? <laughs> and what is wrong with that? Nothing whatsoever, Ferdinand. I mean that. Hey, Loco, how are you? Happy? What in the world has gotten into you? Long as you're jealous, let's play more. Happy, it would be easier to understand you if your mouth was less stuffed. Kindly finish what you are eating and then say your piece. My pleasure. Nothing better than fresh pastries. You sure you don't want one, Coco? It's not about whether I want a bun or not. It's about your atrocious manners. 
Walking around with your arms and jaws stuffed full of unwrapped pastries? There are crumbs all over your lips, your clothes. You've left a trail of them behind you. Unacceptable! Hey, I paid for them. I can eat them however I want. Sure you don't want a bite? If you don't have any, I'm just gonna eat them all. You have to try them fresh out of the oven if you want the full effect. Pretty soon they'll get cold. Oh, I'll explain in noble speak so you understand. <clears throat> they have a crisp, oven browned exterior and a sophisticated, spongy sweetness lying within. Uh, not. Not interested? That's fine. More for me. I was going to say, not so fast. Spare one for me, but only because you insisted. It would be rude of me to decline an offering made in good faith. One must mind one's manners. You're really dragging this out. Here, I'll make it easy for you. Open up. Wait, don't you... Not bad, right? I could not, in good conscience, acknowledge this as anything but delicious. Now you have crumbs all over you, too. Your form could use a little work. Next time, stuff the whole thing in your mouth at once. That's the proper way to eat a snack like this. If you ate this at some stuffy party, cutting it into sensible little bites, the experience would be ruined. I see your point. There are more types of dining in this world than I was ready to allow for. You've won me over. Let's eat them while we head to the cathedral and litter the ground with crumbs. A capital idea! Wait, no! At the cathedral? You've lost me again, Happy. Hey, Lawrence, got a minute? Certainly. I trust you're well? Doing great. I found a load of old weapons, just got done hauling them out of storage. Old weapons, you say? If there are any interesting swords in there, I would love to see them. They might only be good for training, but with a little care, who knows? Here, have some oil. And uh, why exactly are you giving this to me? Like I said, they need a little care. With a bit of maintenance, some of these will really shine. Yes, I heard you. So why did you give me the oil? It's for polishing, Lawrence. Don't tell me you've never polished a weapon before. But that is hardly a task befitting someone of my station. If you had an exquisite blade, something of real historical significance to complement my noble heritage, that would be another matter. In that case, appraise while you polish, you're bound to find something good working through these. This seems as fine an occasion as any to air my grievances. I am a highborn noble. As such, it is my sworn duty to protect the common folk. I have no time for trivialities. What's more, you seem to be under the misapprehension that you can order me about. Please think carefully about how you speak to me. I'm not ordering you around. And I'm not talking to you as a noble, either. I'm asking you to help me with this. As a friend. I am your friend. But I am also a noble. Those two qualities are not mutually exclusive. Oh, good. Let's get to it then, buddy. Flame, there you are. I've been looking everywhere for you. You worry too much, brother. I think a kidnapping is good cause for concern. I was so worried about you, I nearly fainted. Had that not happened, I would have never been allowed to join the professor's class. Even from something so dire, some good did come of it. That is a dangerous attitude. This world is full of peril. You must be more vigilant. Please understand, I allowed you to enroll here only because I thought it best for your safety. I am very much aware of that. You wanted to speak to me of something? Yes, my dear little sister. You are kind beyond all measure, and you are the very picture of innocence. 
But precisely because of these very fine qualities, I worry about your interactions with the others here. This year's students are particularly eccentric. As your brother, it is my duty to help you with any concerns you may have. I do appreciate the offer, but all the students and professors have treated me exceptionally well. Even so, there must be at least some worry. Please, you need not conceal anything from me. You worry far too much. There is truly nothing to share and nothing for you to fret over. Are you absolutely sure? The idea of you suffering in silence is unbearable to me. Enough! I made it clear that nothing is wrong. I stand by my word. Well, there is one concern that comes to mind. What is it? Tell me. I will help however I can. There is a certain somebody who seems determined to get in the way of my friendships with my classmates. What? That's horrible! Fear not. I will handle this scoundrel for you. Just tell me his name. It is you, brother. Now then, I must be on my way. What was Flame getting at just now? Let's see, I was speaking to her. I asked her to share her concerns, and... Was there something else? <laughs> no matter. Fear not, Flame. Your brother will protect you from all harm! Perfect comprehension. I can't believe I did it! must continue to work hard. Oh. 